Michelangelo's famed sculpture, Moses, created in the early 1500s, it is like all of his works of art. It's considered a masterpiece. And you'll see the picture Mike's going to put up here. It, unique to this particular, to this, oh, that's hard to say, unique to this particular masterpiece, that was stressful, is the depiction of a small muscle in the forearm, forearm that contracts when lifting the pinky finger, it's called the extensor digiti minimi. You'll see there that the pinky is lifted in that one little muscle. Look at the detail in which that was carved out. This particular muscle is usually invisible unless it literally is contracted to raise the small finger, as is indeed Moses' sculpted form is doing. Such attention to detail serves the purpose of marking this work of art appear perfect in its representation of the human form. Art historians and critics of the world over marvel at the master's knowledge of understanding the human anatomy, giving praise and laud and honor to his skill, his artistry, and the perfection of his craft. Yet, Michelangelo, as skilled as he is, as talented as he was, he was merely copying the design of the true artist, the creator God, who himself formed and fashioned the very muscle structure of the sculpture he was emulating. So when all is said and done, Michelangelo's creation was still just a piece of what? Stone. Literally, that's all it was. Lifelike, yes, but a mere stone designed to bring honor and glory to its creator, the artist. Church, we're talking about one verse th this morning, and it's Luke 2, 14. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Church, in 2023, who have you, and I dare say in 2024, who are you going to glorify? Jesus Christ, the Most High God, or perhaps look at glorifying ourselves? Because as you've heard your pastor say, nobody loves digs more than digs in my favorite radio station is W-I-I-F-M. What's in it for me? Tanya, stop laughing at me. You know I'm sensitive. But, but as we look at this, number one, glory to God in the highest. Let's begin there. When your feet hit the floor every morning, why do they hit the floor? Why do you get out of bed? Yes, we have jobs, we have careers, we have lives to lead. But all we do must be for the glory of God and no one else, and surely not ourselves. Are you in it to fulfill your list of becoming the next up and comer, or maybe get more? I don't even understand social media anymore, but get more points on Snapchat or Instagram or more likes or more comments. Do you put a post on Facebook and then wait for all the likes and Wow, I got 89 likes or 500 likes on that one, but I got four on this one. Some of y'all are snickering out there. Now, come on. You know you do it because I do it. That's affirmation. But it's what we're putting out there in content glorifying God. Are we wanting to become the next up and come from the next big sensation in corporate America or to get recognized for this or that? or to get put in a leadership role, or do our feet hit the floor to follow the path Christ wants us to trod and plod upon? Are we living and ordering our life as we go into 2024 to truly glorify God in the highest or you in the highest? Our friend here made a beautiful work of art, and they still stand today. That structure still stands, but however, he... He really didn't create anything new. He just copied what he saw. He was 
plagiarizing. Now, there's a buzzword nowadays. It's all throughout the media. And it's really as old as the ages. Plagiarism, what is once said, was the highest form of, of complimentation. It was the highest form of flattery. To copy your work. God created Moses. Michelangelo recreated Moses. And chose one of the most intricate, detailed parts to focus on and for us to ponder. Now, the sculpture was created to be admired, enjoyed, but does it truly glorify God? When's the last time someone looked at that sculpture and said, look what God did? I don't think that's happened. Why did Michelangelo create it? It's it literally, how greater is God's creation for you? You, church, were created with a life, with breath and flesh and bone and heart and soul to go along the way and honor and glorify God on the path that he has for you. As we close out 2023 and as we go into 2024. That is why God created you, to honor and glorify Him and nothing else. To point all living creatures back to Himself. And in times of trouble, to lean back on Christ. To, to literally cast your burdens and cares upon Him. Let, let, let Christ lead you and guide you and fight the battles of your lives. Lean on the everlasting arms and then we will truly begin to honor Christ in all that we say we do with our lives, and as others begin to see that small pinprick of light shining through you. Because when you give God the glory, they cannot help but ask, well, what do you have? You have been to the brink of hell and back, yet you still have joy and hope and love and peace in your heart. How do I get that? That is your, what I call the God window, to share the light of Christ. To glorify Him and to magnify Him and not yourself. And th they wonder why you respond the way you do. And as I keep before you, in the brightest moments, in the darkest of valleys, there's a shadow, and it's a shadow of Christ. Keep your eyes on Christ and give Him the glory as we go into 2024. That's why you were created, to give Him glory. The Christ child was created to honor and glorify the Father and to prepare a way for us to never again have any separation between God and us. Number next, peace on earth. In 1861, two years before writing the poem, Longfellow's personal peace was shaken Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, his, his peace was shaken when his second wife of 18 years, to whom he was very devoted, literally what was fatally burned in an accidental fire. Yet he wrote these words, I heard the bells on Christmas Day, their old familiar carols play. And mild and sweet, the words repeat of peace on earth, good will toward men. And in despair I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth, I said. For hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, good will toward men. Then pealed the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail. Of peace on earth, good will toward men. We have little peace these days, it seems. Just look at the news. We've got wars going on towards our east. We've even got wars going on here in our own neighborhoods. And yet, while the world seems deplorable, when we look at peace on earth, this baby, this Savior, this child of God, this Emmanuel, God with us, has come to bring peace among us. All who roam upon the earth. The world he created. Church, in your lives as you go about the earth, how do people view you? How do they view you? 
do? How do they perceive you? Are you an alarmist in the room or are you the calmest in the room? When worry and friction and frustration come, and it will, do you blow a gasket like me and my man Harry did on Christmas Eve Eve in the cough syrup aisle? Or are you going to be exuding the grace and the peace of Christ? Look over to Matthew. That's the first book of the New Testament. Matthew chapter 5. And you've heard these, uh, these passages. We referred to them often. I'm just going to call out one. Matthew 5, 9. But listen to 3 through 8. And it's building up here. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who... Hunger and thirst for what? Righteousness. For they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are, here it is, church, the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Do people see you as a peacemaker? How are we at bringing peace into this world? It's going to happen, frustration and heartache and strife and just really hard times. Peacemaking. We must go about our lives in 2024 being the peacemakers and being the light of Christ and shining that light in the darkness. Why? Because when we take the light of Christ and shine it into the darkness of the world, that light of love, hope, peace, joy that we've been living into during Advent, that light of grace that comes in the form of a baby, the light of man, the darkness does not comprehend it. And it is quite often that in those moments of shining that light that we can strike up a conversation with somebody as we get to know them. It begins with us upon this hilltop. I pray it begins today as we mobilize our forces and go out I pray we expect God. That's kind of my word for 2024, expectation. I pray that we begin to expect God in this coming year to bring others along the way for us to love and to share the peace that the gospel of Christ brings. Good will toward men. Michelangelo crafted that masterpiece from stone. It's beautiful. The Lord crafts masterpieces of flesh and of bone and of heart and soul. We are his workmanship, Ephesians 2.10, created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We are his masterpiece, we are his workmanship, and we were created to bring him glory. That is our task. Good will toward men. That is right here in our own front yard, our side yard, and our backyard. Is It's all about our local coffee shop. What are we doing to, to spread good will toward men? How's your pew mate? Look to your left or your right. I keep that before you and a half since day one. Do you know? When's the last time they've been here? They may have been out for a while. Have you picked up the phone and called them? Have you sent them a note? Have you sent them a text? Have you sent them a note on Facebook? Have you done a pop-in visit and just taken them? I don't know. How about a pie? A warm coconut cream pie. I'm not a baker, so you're not getting a warm coconut cream pie from a preacher. What are we doing to bring goodwill? It, it begins with us. Have you ever invited that pew mate out to have a meal or have a cup of coffee with them? To get to know them. To, to truly learn how it is with their soul. You know, the youth did a project back in, in December. They got out and they served. We started headed out one direction. Well, that fell apart, so we had to go to plan B. They went shopping for other peoples that they'll never meet. But we asked them, I said, so where did you see God when we got back? And they said, well, we saw God in the middle of Walmart. And I said, but how? And they said, well, we got to go help people that we'll never meet, but they had a need, and we could show them the, the love of Jesus. That's pretty cool. 
That's one of the tangible ways that we're going along the way in helping others. They're spreading goodwill toward men. Every Sunday school class, every Bible study group is to have a service project where you were out in this community. What is that going to be? I don't care what it is, but get up out of these pews, get off this hilltop, and get in this community. I looked up coffee shops this morning. That was on my head. There are 30 coffee shops within a 25-minute drive of this hilltop. I saw something on Facebook, and some dude put up a little note that said, I'm Kevin. I'm here to pray for you. I'm here to talk to you. I'm here to listen to you. If you want to do any of that, sit down. Why don't we go try that? we got 30 opportunities, 30 locations for each one of us to go do something like that to let people know that we are here for them. We are all made of flesh and bone. We are all responsible for our response. It seems that Michelangelo's work, they are standing the test of time yet. I've read the book, sorry to bust your bubble, I know how it's all going to end. It's all going to burn up. I know we don't talk about fire here on the hilltop. This sanctuary is going to burn up one day, even stained glass Jesus. That beautiful sculpture one day will burn into a pile of ash and rubble. However, we are all the work of Christ and we will not burn, we will not die if we believe on the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. We are all the work of Christ. The goodwill toward men comes from the cross. It comes outward. It comes in the form of this baby to the cross, to the tomb, and up to the sky. That's why this baby came, to have peace on earth, goodwill toward men, all to glorify God. We are created to honor and glorify Christ in all we say and do. How, church, then, will we do that in the coming year? What works has he prepared for us to do? Just as the shepherds were out in the field watching and waiting, they were abiding, I pray that we are as well. And I pray that when the Holy Spirit moves, that we are listening and that we are ready. That is my prayer. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Let's